I'm going to call the uh, Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the whole meeting to uh, order this is the Tuesday, October 30th meeting. Um, before we do the roll call, I just want to uh, welcome Mary Rager as part of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, Mary is going to be our staff person who is going to help me prepare agendas, uh, get those agendas posted with uh, City Clerk Sue Richards, uh, also prepare the, prepare the minutes and get those minutes to uh, our, our City Clerk. So welcome, Mary, and Thank appreciate you. your help. Uh, now let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, next, I will entertain a motion on the approval of the minutes from the July 31st meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the July 31st meeting. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Uh, next, we're going to have a uh, public forum. Uh, before we get into the, uh, I ask for a public forum. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer Jim Amodio asked for a minute to address the uh, Committee of the Whole. If you'd like to come up, Jim. Uh, I, I attended yesterday an executive committee meeting for the uh, SCEDC, and it was announced at that meeting that uh, Randy Hopper has resigned and the executive committee has accepted it. So I just wanted to make sure that the council knew that. That was it. Thank you. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Uh, next we have a public forum on agenda items. Uh, does anybody from the public want to address the uh, committee of the whole? Does anybody, would anybody like to speak? And for the third, third time, would anybody like to speak? Okay. Uh, the chairman's comments, uh, I want, I'd like to call on uh, Alderman Scott Versey, uh, chairman of the Sh S Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force Committee, and he will make a few comments and introduce our guests from Arc Electric. Alderman Versey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> brief synopsis on why we're here today. Um, Arc Electric has been in front of our committee several times, and it was actually our initiative to get green, if you want to use that term and use more solar energy with in the city and lower our energy costs on multiple different levels. Um, Arc Electric, uh, Ed, Ed Zithver is the president of Arc Electric and Chris Merkline are gonna be giving us the presentation tonight. The way we've looked at it is uh, we looked at all utility bills through the entire city, what we're paying today, what we paid in 2008. That was our baseline that we came up with because we didn't have any good numbers up until then. Uh, we made some good headway. And the reason why Sustainable Task Force has taken it over is because that's our charge is to get into the city and see what we can do to make it better, greener, and actually use more renewable sources that we didn't have in the past. So um, that's how he's here today. We've seen two, I've seen two presentations already from them. <laughs> They've been in front of our committee twice. That's why we have them in front of you to get more input from the aldermen. This is something that it will be a frontier um, in the marketplaces, having municipalities having this done. No other municipality has this. So Sheboygan would be a leader. Um, First, time, first one in the state of Wisconsin, I believe, for sure. Um, so that, to me, being a leader is a little bit better than being a follower. So if we can become that first leader on using renewable sources and helping our energy costs, that's one reason why they're here. And the biggest thing is, we'll get into that, is the um, savings it's gonna do and give us to the city so we can put it in other areas or whichever we fight, feel fit on that side. So right now, I'll invite up uh, Ed Zithrin, Zitherman, Zinfafer, and Chris McLean to give our presentation. While they're coming up, I'm going to have uh, Mary take the role. I neglected to do that. Sorry. Okay. Bellinger. Here. Lauren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Uh, not excused. Bellinger. Here. 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 Excused. Matichek. Not excused. Bracelet. Not excused. Here. Vanderweel. Not excused. Mercy. Here. Lundeman. Not excused. Uh, I'll just read, before we get into the presentation, I'll just read the, uh, this is for, uh, is an item for discussion and possible re recommendation of the Common Council. Council document 
number 3.13 uh, 3 from the October 1st, 2012 meeting, RO, uh, RO number 161-12-13 by the city clerk, submitting a communication from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, Jean Kleinus, secretary, requesting that the Common Council call a committee of the whole meeting to receive a presentation from Arc Electric on the proposed solar energy project for city buildings. Proceed, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Versi. Um, as indicated, my name is Chris Merkline. I'm general manager with Arc Electric. I'm a LEED accredited professional and a NABCEP certified professional. Um, and this is Ed Zinthifer, president of Arc Electric. He's a NABCEP certified installer, an IREC master PV trainer, a focus and energy compliance agent uh, with a long list of other credentials. Um, long story short, we have a uh, great history in the renewable energy business. We're based in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Um, and we stumbled across a financing package that uh, offers a unique opportunity for municipalities with high bond ratings for which uh, the city of Sheboygan qualifies. Um, Scott did a great job of summarizing kind of how we got to this point. Um, I'll try and be respectful of, of everybody's time. We'll, we'll go fairly fast through our presentation and uh, hopefully save enough time for questions at the end um, or if, you wanted to, if we need to go back in any of the slides, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, a, a brief history on Arc Electric. The company was started by Ed in 2003. Um, we started as experienced traditional industrial master electricians. Shortly thereafter, in 2005, was our first solar PV install. In 2007, uh, Ed became NABCEP certified. In 2008, we became Focus and Energy Compliancy Agents. In 2010, we hired NABCEP certified employee number two. In 2010, we were also the largest PV installer in Wisconsin per focus on energy. They told us that statistic. In 2010, we became IREC, Ed became an IREC master PV trainer. Interesting side note, um, still to date, as far as we're aware, there are only nine IREC, nine people in the entire country of the United States that hold that credential, and Ed is, Ed is one of them. Um, in 2011, he hired lead AP. In 2011, we also hired NABCEP certified employees number three, four, and five. 2012, we introduced this cash flow positive program to municipalities and school districts. Um, as, of today, as of today, we have over three megawatts of renewable power installed. And uh, hopefully next year, we can boast that uh, we've installed our first municipal PV under this instant cash flow positive program. Uh, again, I want to be respectful of people's time, but we'll go over the, uh, the, the fundamentals of solar electricity real quickly, and then again, if there are any questions, we can come back to this type of stuff. Uh, but essentially, the sunlight hits a solar module. That solar module creates DC electricity, which a building or your home cannot use. Uh, that DC electricity is converted into AC with that inverter. First and foremost, it goes to the distribution panel of that building, and that electricity that's created by the sun is used by the lights and the TVs and the computers within that facility. If by chance the solar system is overproducing more than what the demand of the building is at that time, the meter will literally run backwards and align to energy's territories, which the city of Sheboygan is under, and it will send that electricity back to the grid. Uh, the utility company, their billing software, and their meters are smart enough to recognize that, and they will either bill you or credit you the difference at the end of a month. A lot of people say solar in Wisconsin. Really? Have you seen it outside lately? The truth of the, truth of the matter is it actually works quite well in Wisconsin. There are a variety of reasons, and I'll be willing to talk any one of your ears off offline here, but uh, the short story is here's a comparison to Germany who are the world leaders in sol solar photovoltaics currently. And uh, this is a map of solar iridescence, or on average, how much sunlight do they get in a year. As you can see, Germany is, is clearly not a good place for solar, but they're still doing it like crazy. And if you see Wisconsin, they're in the orange color. Not quite as good as Arizona or California, of course, but still quite good. And there are some other technical things regarding temperature where the colder temperature is actually good for solar production. Um, and after, afterwards, we'd be happy to answer any technical questions that anybody has. I don't want to slow down this presentation too much on the, the technical details, though. Here are some examples um, to bring you up to speed with uh, some of the projects that we've done locally here in Wisconsin and some of the terminology that we'll be using. In the upper left is a picture of a church down in Port Washington. That's what we refer to as a direct roof mount system, for obvious reasons. In the lower left, that's what we call a pole-mounted tracker system. That's a system that wakes up in the morning facing east, and it follows the sun all day long, and it goes to bed in the west. 
um, because the, the longer that a, a solar panel is perpendicular to the sun, the more efficient it is, the more electricity it produces. In the upper right is a traditional 25 degree rack mounted system that would go on a flat roof. And we installed that before we partnered with a local Wisconsin company that designs and manufactures custom um, uh, racking systems for flat roofs for here in Wisconsin. In the lower right you can see that where it's the front edge is lifted off the roof a little bit. In the upper right picture you'll, you'll notice that the leading edge of the solar module is only a few inches off of the roof. Well there's really no place for the snow to shed and if part of that panel is shaded by the snow the, the, the performance of the system suffers greatly. And so a simple solution for a few extra pennies we, we keep the manufacturing of that rack right here in Wisconsin and we just lift that front edge off of the the roof 16 or 18 inches and we tilt it a little further to 35 degrees. You can't get those types of racks just off the shelf and it's a small thing that we're very proud of at Arc Electric that we brought more work here into Wisconsin. In the upper left is a, a picture of a carport, a charging station. In the lower left that is a, another shade structure that we did for a bus company down in the Milwaukee area. In the upper right is a Conomowoc bus company. That was a 50 kW system. And in the lower right, that is a ground mount system uh, for a high school down in Jackson. Here is a partial list of local solar customers. Uh, some of you may recognize, and we encourage you to follow up and, and see how, how they feel about their solar now that they've had it installed, in some cases, for many years. Uh, the first of which shouldn't be a stranger to anybody. That's Maywood Environmental Center. Um, David Kukuk's a good friend of Arc Electric and every time I talk to him he can't say enough about how the solar is performing and some of the other uh, energy efficiency upgrades that we've done at that facility. Um, Lakeshore Technical College, St. Nicholas Redevelopment, that is the old St. Nicholas Hospital that's now a senior housing. We have a 30 some KW system on their roof. JSM Communications, the FCC Church that's right by Volrath Bowl, Ebenezer UCC on Taylor Drive, Bondi's Quick Mart in, in Cleveland, Allen Crack Farms up in Newton, Plymouth Utilities, we just did two trackers for Plymouth Utilities, the Kohler Company, Lakeland Construction, and Century Acres. Those are a few of our, our local customers. Um, th this is a Google SketchUp rendering that we did. This is the St. Nicholas Hospital building, or now Senior Apartments. It was part of the sales process with uh, the developer, the owner of that building. Now they wanted to see what it was going to look like, just to show the group what we're capable of if we get that far, and there are people cons concerned with, you know, the Architectural Review Board and all of that good stuff. We're capable of producing these types of things. Uh, here's another example of a project that uh, did not move forward. Um, another example of our capabilities, because every site is unique. This is Plymouth Utilities building as they were just getting in the ground and the, we started our project. We started digging holes and the landscaper said, hey, wait a second, we've got trees going up around here. And so this is just a, one quick screen snapshot of how we did a fly around and we, we programmed into the system how the sun would go across the horizon at different times of the year and it would cast a shadow. And we made sure, we helped the landscapers make sure that of the different species of trees that were planting, it wouldn't interfere with production of the solar modules. Monitoring and public relations, this is very important to some of our customers. Um, and and this, this is what we refer to as a dashboard. It's a monitoring system that always keeps track of how your solar system is performing, what it's doing right now, what it did last week, what it did last year, or for the last 20 years, as long as it's been plugged in. Um, and, and later on, if we want to, we're, we're online here. I can go to <coughs> some of our local customers and we can review how that website works. Again, it's very important to some of our customers that they're able to not only boast this, to show this to the rest of the world that they're green, uh, but equally important to keep track of their investment and see if it's really paying off and all this stuff that Arc Electric promised me, is it really coming true? This is a way to, you know, to keep track of that. Uh, so a little bit of electricity and electrical billing 101. Most people are probably familiar with this, so I'm going to fly through it relatively quick. Um, but still, it's important to know. Uh, units of electricity are purchased in kilowatt hours. Anybody who gets a utility bill recognizes that. Alliant Energies charges you per kilowatt hour consumed. Um, the cost of kilowatt hours are proportional to customer usage. Small, medium, large, not everybody pays the same rate. And that, that's a whole other discussion, but just know that it actually will we'll show that in some of the charts a little later. But City Hall, for instance, play, it pays a different rate than the transit building across the street. And there are reasons for that, and Alliant Energy could really answer that a lot better than we can. But just know for, for today's purposes that that is a fact. This building is different than that building, is different than the police station, and so on. 
Solar PV systems are sized in kilowatts, KW, and so those are two different terms. Potential targets for the city of Sheboygan, um, these are things that were brought to us by the task force saying that uh, do not exceed 2008 levels of kilowatt hour usage. That's one of their goals and you'll see in, a, in a, a future slide that you've done a tremendous job at reducing your consumption so far. And 18 by 18 was a term that they used. It was a, a, a goal that they kind of threw out there for their team. I don't want to speak on their behalf, but it was, um, it was portrayed to us that by 2018 they would like to see 18% of all electricity used in Sheboygan should be powered by renewable sources. Uh, the, the top group of numbers is the, the group that we're going to focus on for today's purposes. And the, the, these are the kilowatt hour consumption numbers, not including the water utility building, the water utility accounts, or any street lights. This, these are much smaller numbers and easier to focus on. The second set of numbers is a little bit bigger, and according to people at the city and um, Laura at Alliant Energy, it's a little harder to measure the second group. So we'll focus on the top numbers, but you can see back in 2008, you're at 2.8 million and some change kilowatt hours used. Went up slightly in 2009 and has gone down quite a bit into 2011. Um, so some quick math at the bottom there. 2.69 million kilowatt hours times 0.18, which is that 18%, which was a goal that was shared with us, would be 485,000 kilowatt hours. Um, and again, those are the numbers we're going to focus on, not that 12 million number from the, the bottom group there. A summary of the solar financing slash leasing package, which is going to be the biggest question that I'm sure everybody here uh, would, like, would like answered. The financing program is specific to renewable energy projects, uh, specifically solar and wind. It's investor-owned, leased to the city of Sheboygan with no penalty options for early purchase of the system. Potential users are, th this financing partner who has approached us said, we're targeting municipalities and or school districts with high bond ratings. And when we told them we were speaking with the city of Sheboygan, they got all excited and said they have double A1 rating. They're perfect for our, for our program. They are capable of very large loan amounts. These are big names in the financial world. Um, they're not banks, so they're able to lend under a different set of rules, which is a little bit foreign to me, but they speak all kinds of fancy words saying that they're perfect for this kinds of thing. And this investment, although lower return on their investment is also much lower in risk and, and diversifying their portfolio, they say th th that's why they're targeting these types of projects. They're also capable of smaller loan amounts. They shared with us after we pushed and they, oh, $1.5 million. They think they could go, but that's, you know, peanuts to these guys. So we're using the, the $1.5 million floor level. That's where they need to be at a, or above before we really get their attention. Very low interest rates, 3 to 4%. Of course, financing is subject to approval, and it may change over time, but during our last conversations with them, that's where they were. And long term, from 15 to 35 years, and the whole idea behind, behind the entire program is that it's in instantly cash flow positive to the municipality. Hypothetical case study for Sheboygan. A 335.58 kW solar PV system would produce an estimated 400,000 kilowatt hours in annual production, or 399,000 kilowatt hours of production. Estimated average utility rate is 11.87 cents, and, and we're not making these numbers up. We were provided with permission from the city of Sheboygan. Alliant Energy has provided us with all kinds of fund spreadsheets on what this building has used since 2008. Uh, through 2011, what the building across the street, so on and so forth. Essentially, they gave us um, access to every account in any building that spends over $5,000 a year. And that's what, from this point forward, all of the statistics that we're sharing with you on, the, on the, the dollars and kilowatt hours that the city of Sheboygan has used, it's not arbitrary or made up. These are from spreadsheets that we got from Alliant Energies. Um, so that the PV system would produce approximately, at that rate, at 11.87 cents, would produce $47,000 of electricity. And the payment, using their formulas for payment back to the, the lease payment, would be $42,662. So quick math tells us that's $4,740 savings in year number one. And of course, dependent on financing details, the system will be paid for between 17 and 25 years, cash flow positive every year. Um, case study number one, this is the larger system. We're going to continue on that in the future. In a future slide, I'll have a, a case study for a little smaller, what we'll refer to as a proof of concept project. But sticking with the 335.58 kW overall system size, the option one would be broken up into approximately 13 to 17 separate smaller projects. 
We would target and, uh, higher rate paying facilities for obvious reasons. When the solar system is connected to higher rate paying buildings, that's what that electricity is worth that it's producing. Or option number two is installed as a single ground mount system, which we would need to find a lot of space to put that much electricity on. And uh, just an interesting side note, it would be more than likely be harder to get that through with Alliant Energies. We're going to need Alliant Energies cooperation to make any of this happen. Um, estimated production, again, here's the number of 399,000 kilowatt hours. And based on the 2011 numbers without the water utilities, again, we're focusing on those smaller numbers, it represents a 14.8% in electric usage offset. Uh, based on the 2000 numbers, oh, that's with the larger one. We're, we're going to skip the last couple of bullet points there for all the reasons I mentioned before. So cumulative savings, using a 6% average annual increase in utility rates. Now, to be fair, Alliant Energies isn't here to defend themselves, but uh, they have, from what I understand, put a freeze on prices for the next four years. Uh, so that's good news for everybody. And we have been challenged, just a, another side note, they say, okay, 6% really arc electric, are you sure? We have been challenged and put on the spot in presentations like this, and so we've been forced to go back and, and prove it. The real number for the Midwest is actually closer to 7%, but we'll stick with a conservative 6%. Again, some years it's 1%, some years it's 12%, and we've got some interesting numbers that um, uh, for the city of Sheboygan just since 2008 coming up. At any rate, after five years, $26,000, and after 40 years of owning the system, uh, assuming 6% average increase, over $5 million saved in electricity. Some equivalency comparisons. Um, there's always someone in the room that is interested in how many trees are we saving, how many gallons of gas, so on and so forth. Um, and we have those numbers. These, these calculations are based on the EPA's numbers. Um, long story short, you'd be saving lots of gallons of gasoline consumed, um, the equivalent of planting all kinds of trees and all that fun stuff. And um, again, there's usually somebody in the room who's very concerned about that, so we like to share these charts. Now, the next couple of slides are the most important, in my opinion. Uh, and and this, these, this is my, our term, the hedge against utility rates. Now, Please pay attention to the numbers here, take some notes, and we can always come back to this, but the next few slides are the most important in my opinion. Everything in this proposal, again, so far has assumed that 6% per year increase in utility rate. Service is spending $5,000 to $50,000 a year for the city of Sheboygan. Annual rates have increased on average of 8.28% from 08 to 11. And these are facts, again, based off of spreadsheets that Alliant Energy provided us. So that 6% number is even probably too conservative. Specifically, City Hall, the building we're in, has increased more than 16% in utility rates since 2008. In some cases, not always, but in some cases, if usage goes down, mysteriously, the rates go up. Solar could benefit this situation, and this is why I refer to it as a hedge against utility rates. For example, the water utility accounts, the usage went up. Their usage went up, but their rates only increased less than 4% from 08 to 011 because they were using more. Hey, you're a good customer. Thanks for using a lot of electricity. We'll give you a little better rate. The wastewater utility accounts, which everybody I'm sure is well aware is a real pioneer in their business, and they have reduced their usage quite a bit. Well, because of that, congratulations, your rates go up 13.05% in the same time period. That's the foundation of our argument. This is a hedge against utility rates. In general, the city of Sheboygan kilowatt hour usage <coughs> decreased 15.84% from 08 to 011. Congratulations, you guys have done a phenomenal job on exchanging your lights out to more energy efficiency lights and all the other things that the city of Sheboygan does to its facilities. Well, wait a second, how come you know, our, our costs have only decreased 0.34%, one third of 1%, that's how much money you saved for all of the efforts that you put in on energy efficiency. So to summarize, from 08 to 011, your usage went down almost 16%. The rates went up on average 8.28%. And all the money you saved was less, was a third of 1%. And those are based on numbers that Alliant Energy sent us. So here is a second hypothetical case study. Uh, again, people say, well, that's a, that's a big chunk to chew off. You're talking millions of dollars for this. Even if it is cash flow positive, that, that's, those are some big numbers that might scare some people. So we were encouraged to come up with a proof of concept type project. Prove to us that this stuff isn't science fiction, that it really works. So that's what this slide is. Uh, what we refer to as a 20 kW system is very common for, for different reasons in our industry. A 20 kW or slightly less than 20 kW is very common for us. 
So a 19.8 kW system size estimated to produce 25,000 kilowatt hours per year. Um, and in 2011, the electrical usage by the, the building that we identified for this um, proof of concept project was, uh, what fire station was that, Ed? 15th Street. Uh, that would represent a 51.3% offset of their electricity. Um, and there would be potential options for, again, us to own the system and lease it back to the city of Sheboygan, which we'd be happy to have those conversations. But a lot of these 20 kW systems are just purchased with, you know, cash because in the long run it would look better for your finances once you get over the hump of your return on investment. Um, but we could certainly talk about those things, a 30-year lease. Frequently asked questions, and then we'll get to the regular questions here pretty quick, I promise. Uh, maintenance, a five-year maintenance program is included in this, in the big program. In the sixth year, maintenance is turned over to the city of Sheboygan, and of course, we would like to continue to be your partner, um, and, and we would go after that maintenance contract. Um, project success requires utility approval. I mentioned that before. We're going to need Alliant Energies to be on board with this. And options to pay <coughs> system off early without penalty. And of course, references and project successes are, are can be provided in a separate handout at any time. We've had a great deal of success in southeastern Wisconsin, uh, many companies and homeowners that I'm sure many of you know. Uh, the next steps, um, we'd like to propose a professional services contract with Arc Electric to perform a solar site survey of the 17 potential locations that just based off of paperwork and, and Google Earth searches from the satellite view, we've identified 17 real potential locations that could uh, be good hosts for solar. Um, a detailed report and proposal with those recommended <coughs> solar system designs and financing slash lease package. And then finally, last but not least, um, discussions on how Arc Electric can manage this project moving forward. There you have it. Questions? Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you and um, thank you to the committee. You know, oftentimes when we're in the middle of our day-to-day -day routines, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to some of these things, so thank you for bringing this up. I guess one of the questions I have is, um, you know, a, a system like the one you were outlining in hypothetical number one, um, what is the cost of something like that? Of course, in municipality world right now, everything comes down to cost, and I understand there's a, a through your illustration, a, a, a positive cash flow to that. Um, and secondly is what is the useful life of one of these types of systems? I mean, the maintenance contract lasts for five years, the leases last for 30. Um, you know, what is the useful life? What can a municipality expect for ongoing maintenance costs on a on an annual basis um, after the warranty period is up, um, those types of things. So it's kind of three questions I just threw at you. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> all right, that's all right. I'll do my best to answer and hopefully Ed can back me up. Um, the, the, the first question, the dollars. Uh, the overall cost, what, the, what our financing partner would pay Arc Electric to install this would be, again, close to 1.5 million and some change. Um, the, the key to make the, the whole thing work though is, is again, the, it's a, 25 to 35 year term, or you say 30 years, and low financing. Uh, so the cost to the city would be your, your monthly payment to the financier, uh, which again would be $42,000. Now, that comes with, some, with an asterisk. The assumption was that our system would produce $47,000 worth of electricity every year. Um, some years are good. This past year is fantastic. A lot of our customers are, we, we give these proposals to, of course, every project that we do. We say, we estimate this, it's going to produce this many dollars for you this year. Uh, 20, uh, 2012 has been fantastic for our customers. They're enjoying, we're, we're anywhere between 15 and in one case in Milwaukee, uh, in Brookfield, we are, there were 26. Is that the number? Was it that high? I can't, let's say 26% above their, their projected uh, numbers. Next year might not be so good. It may be more cloudy like this. Either way, the financier is going to expect their $42,000 every year. Um, so that was that. This, the second question was more so maintenance. The solar systems, for the most part, are, are maintenance-free. However, somewhere in the life cycle, you can probably expect to pay for an inverter. That's the weak link in a solar in a PV system is the inverter. Somewhere in that 30 years, you're more than likely going to have to buy new inverters, and that would be an additional cost to the city. Um, and last but not least, the life expectancy. Uh, you're right, the lease goes for 30 years. These things are expected to go for at least 40 to 50 years. NASA has some solar still in outer space on satellites that's you know 50 plus years old and it's still producing electricity. And uh, technology has only gotten better since then. 
Did I skip over anything too fast? I'm sorry. No. Nope. Um, I, I guess my other question would be just the durability factor. You know, you, obviously you've got a lot of these installed. Wisconsin winters can be fairly tough. <coughs> you know, guys like me standing there throwing snowballs at them just for giggles. Um, you know, how, what can we expect from broken solar panels? I mean, uh, that, that's a good, fair question, um, and we have, I don't know how many thousands of solar panels or solar modules installed around here, and to our knowledge, there was one, there was a baseball that hit one, can't beat that, uh, and other than that, is there, there was one on top of Concordia College that we saw that broke, and that was kind of a mystery, only one broke, um, but of the thousands, There's how many, vandalism. yeah, it, it, vandalism is, is much more of a, a problem. Mm -hmm. um, than, than, uh, than nature. For, instance, for example, they're U, all these panels are UL tested to, uh, to take a one inch hailstone at 80 miles an hour. And then, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good ding. And we've, other than the one on top of Concordia University, I don't know if we've ever replaced one just for natural causes. And again, we have thousands and thousands of solar modules out there. So it's certainly not impossible. Vandalism though would be um, the biggest concern. And if they're rooftop mounts, then that concern drops off quickly. Any other questions? <clears throat> I have one. Uh, technology, uh, technology, of course, is rapidly progressing in all different, all different kinds of fields. It seems like there's a new iPhone about every three months. Uh, what if the uh, technology in solar really advances? Uh, for example, if, uh, if solar panels, the ones that we would install, let's say, in five or six years, are obsolete because there's a bigger and better solar panel, are we able to take advantage of that without having to buy an entirely new system? What's going to happen as technology advances? <clears throat> That's a common question, and um, I, I guess we're not in no position to guarantee that the next greatest thing isn't right around the corner, but there are no indicators of it. If you look at the efficiency of, of solar modules and all of the solar equipment that we, that we install, <clears throat> it, it, get, it gets better every year. Um, one or two or three percent per year is, is what we're finding and that's been steadily increasing and there are always rumors of oh the next you can paint your building with solar paint you know and that's gonna I, I don't see that happening the second part of your question can you take off the old technology and plop on something new um, maybe Ed wants to tackle that after after my comment here but once you've made that investment your financial performance isn't necessarily going to change. The, the money's out there and it's up there on your roof producing electricity for you. I wouldn't recommend, it would have to be some, a, a gigantic leap in technology and efficiency in order to make that worthwhile, I guess. I agree. Anything, okay. And, and again, we, <clears throat> we live and breathe in this industry. We have our finger on the pulse of all the technology and all the sales guys call us 100,000 times every week and there are no indicators that the next big thing is right around the corner. Thanks. Any other questions? Alderman Lassard? Um, you had mentioned that moving forward there are a few steps that need to be done and for you to Google map and look at sites and um, do you charge the city to do that or is that? Would you, re uh, would you use your microphone, Alderman Lassard? Thank you. Sorry. Do you hear me or not so much? I, I could hear you. We're on television, so it's for the people at home. My question was, in the preparation to move forward, you had requested that one of the first steps would be to take a Google map and look at sites for the 17 different areas. Does your company charge the city to do that investigation, or is that something you're doing to be able to get this bid? Is this going to cost us anything for you to get us that information? Um, yes, yes, but it will be more, much more in-depth what we're proposing to do. We've already done the Google, we've, we've looked at all the buildings in Google, and we've even done some quick drive-bys. Um, and we've, of course, looked at the, the information that Alliant Energy sent us. Uh, but we would propose a, a, a contract be signed with a fee to Arc Electric to do detailed on-site analysis for each of the 17 buildings that we've identified. We would like to... Uh, take a look at the building structure, take a look at the electrical on the building, and it's going to take a, a NABCEP certified professional uh, a number of hours to not only be on site, but then take that information back to the office and develop a real world type of a proposal and a financial performa that would uh, detail what we would be proposing to Sheboygan 
um, rather than at, you know, now we're, we're not at 30,000 feet anymore, we're maybe at 15,000 feet. But if there is a sincere interest by the city to pursue this and really learn what is this thing going to look like exactly, um, we would like to charge a fee for that to bring it down to ground level and drill, drill down into this thing a little deeper. Um, and the arena of that fee would be? Uh, we, ha we have, uh, we were instructed to put together something tonight because that was going to be an obvious question. Uh, the charge for that would be $5,000. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Donahue? Uh, so the proposed scope is for solar on 17 buildings? I didn't quite get that from the presentation. Is there a possible a possibility of, of reducing the scope or... Um, the scope in terms of dollars or number of buildings? Well, I would assume that would be both. It, um, pr probably not, and the reason goes back to the, to the financing partner, uh, where they're, they're looking for big, big, big projects, and anything under that $1.5 <coughs> million, they start to lose interest, and it all of a sudden doesn't make sense for them to go through all of the paperwork and efforts to put, to put something like this together. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Chairman. So, in the event that we have these systems on 17 buildings, are we not able then to sell any of these buildings? Or um, if we sell a building, is that lease transferred? Or what is the, the obligation? That is a very good question that you raise an interesting point. Um, in traditional, it, 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 if, you, if you own, yes, the, the, the system would go along with the building. But because there's a financing partner, that complicates things. Um, so that should absolutely be considered by the city before we deem any particular building a good host for one of these systems because you're going to own it for 30 years and then some. And after it's paid off and the lease has expired or you, again, if there are options for early buyouts, which, the, which our financing partner clearly said, there's no penalty, you know, you can cash purchase and, and buy us out at any time. Um, that would, we would have to explore that, but I, I would imagine at this point that it would be an option for that particular part of the system to be pulled out and sold with the building, but I'm in no position to promise that. I've got a question for Alderman Hammond as chairman of the Finance Committee and maybe even uh, Mr. Amodio, and that is uh, this $1.5 million or whatever the ultimate cost would end up to be, would that be eligible that we could put that into a capital improvements budget and borrow it, for example, this year we were able to borrow $4 million at I believe 1.5% interest. Uh, is that something that could be put into capital improvements and therefore possibly with our borrowing power maybe be able to get a better rate than the three or 4% if rates were at, uh, better than that at that time? Sure. I mean, there, we can borrow what we can borrow at. <clears throat> um, I forget what the blended rate we had last time was about one and a half. Yeah, one five seven. So, you know, certainly we'd look at that as an option versus three. I know that's not going to make your financing partner very happy, but unless they're willing to come down to a to a level like that, um, but you know, we can cut the rate in half right now because of our bond rating. Uh, well, that that's a great idea, and if you can do that, that we would support that a hundred percent. Again, we certainly don't want to undercut our financing partner, but um, that goes back to your question again, though, too. Could we reduce the scope of the project? Absolutely. They're the ones who set that $1.5 million mark. And if you guys are able to do it at, at more favorable rates, uh, and then you, you, you can pick a budget or a system size or a, an electricity goal, and we can design to that. Do you have another question? I, I, I did. Um, we were talking earlier, and, and maybe this is somewhat of a, or you were mentioning earlier, maybe this is somewhat of a mute point. Um, maybe it all evens out at the end. But um, we produce excess electricity. Does a, you know, is Alliant willing to buy that back from the grid or does it just show up as a credit? Yeah. Is there a possibility of selling some of that back to Alliant and helping to offset some of our cost structure or does it just show up as a credit, excuse me, as a credit on our, on our bill? I know in some cases, and, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but you know, larger groups that have done some of the wind power and, and some of the larger farms have, have been able to sell that back to the grid if they've produced excess um, to help finance the project. Sure, sure, and that, that's, um, that can be a complicated question because different utilities have different rules, and there were some things that were available in the past that are now locked down, but in terms of today and Alliant Energies, the threshold that we want to stay under, I mentioned that 20 kW system size before, that's an important number because of 
um, because of different rules that are in place in our industry. And if we stay under that 20 kW size per meter that we're connecting to, yes, we can sell back to Alliant Energies and they'll pay retail rate, the exact same rate that that meter is paying to consume electricity. That's exactly what they will pay you for everything you send back to the grid. Yes. One, once we cross that 20 kW threshold, Alliant Energies is very funny and they, and they will not pay you, I don't believe, anything. Correct. I guess the, the follow-up is how realistic is that? That, 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 would be that, part of the, that would be part of the study where we could really drill down and, and spend some time uh, determining that, which, and, and that would be a big part of how we design these systems. Why is this building only getting 19.9 kW when, it, when its roof could host 50 kW? That, that's part of what we do. We would help design the best system financially for the city, if that makes sense. All of university. Actually, I have two things. The first one was back to the financing option. The reason why we chose their financing partner is because it's not costing us any money. Us going out, we are purchasing that. That you know, We're using our lower bond rating, lower interest rate. That's much better that way. But this way, we're using their financing to really see it produce before we go out and spend the money. That was my mindset behind there, using their financing. Yes, it's a higher interest rate, but we can see the proof is in the pudding, right? So you go three, five years down the road, it's producing that, then we could probably go out and bond at our lower rating, purchase out the panels, wipe out the financing partner, and now we're ahead. Well, but if it's not producing, can we walk away from it? Their financing partners? Right. That's the flaw there. Yeah. Because if it's not producing, you know, we're stuck with this thing at 3 or 4%, and we're going to have to buy it out anyways. Second part, <laughs> sorry. building-wise, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as buildings, we looked at doing some of the smaller buildings, so that potential is more realistic, because mm -hmm. if we put it on top of, like he just he made the point, <laughs> I'm putting it on a smaller building, kicking back and selling the energy back, is, you know, that building is completely 100% sufficient, and we're selling it back. That's what he's, they're going to look at, being able to do that, instead of putting it on top of the biggest buildings and not really making a dent. So that's the whole per point behind having them do their full in-depth survey of what we're doing. There's something else worth mentioning here that's Im important to understand for um, w when we're having these discussions, and that is th there are two pieces of, of this package, the financing that, that our investor has or a, a, a for-profit company can find value, and that is a 30% federal tax credit, and the second is the value of depreciation of that equipment. Um, a financer or a private company can take advantage of those things. From my understanding, uh, I, I don't think a municipality can. And so that's a big chunk of your financial performance where all of a sudden it might not make as much sense for you in black and white. Mr. Amorio? I believe the number was 14%, 14 point, 14 point something, if I recall that slide, yeah. In a lot of cases, they would be 20 kW or less, but in, in, in the case, if we were to find a large building where there's no chance we would ever send electricity back to the grid, you guys are always consuming way more than 20 kWs of electricity. In that case, we, one or two of the systems could certainly be SARS sized much larger. The, the, the key point is that in Alliant Energies, once you cross that 20 <coughs> kW threshold, you never want to send electricity back to the grid because they won't pay you a penny for it. That's what we would recommend. Um, it's typically more cost effective, plus it, it lowers the vandalism risk. Any other questions? <clears throat> Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, you mentioned first five years maintenance is included. What is the typical maintenance that needs to be done? And secondly, what would be the ongoing charge if we were to partner with you for a yearly maintenance contract? 
Good question. The, the maintenance for the first five years is really going to be minimal. Um, in fact, I, I'd like Ed to answer that if that's all right. He, this is much more in, yeah, in Thank you. Him. Maintenance from our perspective, in all reality, is quite simple because they're mechanical parts, and as long as everything's affixed to the building, uh, we look for water mitigation. If there are direct attachments to any structures, we watch performance specifically through monitoring to ensure that the system is functioning and doing what we said it was going to do. And we watch for just the overall performance of each system. And we know what the benchmarks are. And if we see something slipping, for example, we can mitigate that head on early on. Most of our failures we've ever seen happen within the first week. That's the weak spot of the whole system. Once we get them through that, we call it a burning period. We get a week under the belt. They, they typically operate flawlessly. So maintenance is very minimal. And the likely charge ongoing, do you have an idea what that would be? No. Any other questions? <clears throat> Mr. Beeble. Very true. Let me just repeat that for the people at home. Uh, the 30-year lifespan of the system, is there any uh, diminishing of the production of the electricity over the 30-year period? And the degradation, according to the manufacturers, uh, averages about one-third of 1% 1 on an annual basis. And we build that into our performa so that as we look at the financial aspect <coughs> of it, we can see exactly what that's going to do over time. Any other questions? We have this item down for a discussion and possible <coughs> recommendation to the Common Council. Would any of the older persons uh, like to make a recommendation to the Common Council at this time? Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd like to make a recommendation to forward this to the Common Council for consideration of the going through and continuing on with this survey of our 17 different spots. Uh, would you like to refer that to a specific committee for consideration? I suppose you should probably go to finance. Right. So that would be uh, ref uh, refer to finance. Refer to finance. Yeah. Do you have that motion, Mary? It's got to go to. It's got to go to council got, first, though. Yeah, it's got to go to council first. Yeah, finance. We have a, a, a motion and a second. Okay, would you call the roll, please? Uh, Alderman Donahue. Okay, just so I understand, so the motion is to essentially approve a $5,000 contract to go ahead with the, the survey as, as proposed. That's what I thought. We have a motion and a second. Uh, would you call the roll, please, Mary? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, before I uh, move any further on the agenda, I just want to remind the older persons and anybody who may be watching this tonight on television, uh, WSCS, our cable, uh, our cable television station, has an open house tonight from 5 until 7. For any of the older persons that are interested in attending, that's out at UW Sheboygan, and that would be in, on the south door off the parking lot. And then our next meeting date uh, is to be announced, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Nice.